Hi kids, it's Reverend James here with Children's Time for the second Sunday of Advent. Hope you're all doing well and get excited for Christmas. We're, we're getting there one candle at a time. So if you remember last week I was explaining about Advent wreaths. Well, here I am in the, the church in Sanford with our beautiful Advent wreath. And so we're going to light our first candle from last Sunday, which is the Candle of Hope. And today we light our second candle, which is the Candle of Peace. So let us pray. Lord God, we ask that during this Advent season, the peace of Christ, who we celebrate on his birthday at Christmas time, may grow ever stronger in our hearts, that we may be a people and a church and a society of peace. Amen. So we're going to get uh, to the Advent wreath in a minute. I want to talk to you a bit more about it. Um, but if you want, if you take out your your manger scene from last week, we're going to add some more figures to it. So uh, you'll need your glue stick and your scissors. So if you have your, your manger scene from last week, is that showing up on camera? <laughs> um, with our sheep on it, uh, today we're going to add the angels and the shepherd, the the guy with the little walking stick or cane, that's just called a shepherd's crook. And we're gonna add um, the little manger where uh, baby Jesus will be laid. So if you haven't already, you can color those. And uh, we're gonna cut them out and we're going to glue them to our manger scene. So uh, go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have my um, two angels that I decided to put up here. So we got a lot of angels here, getting really excited for Jesus's birth. And I got my shepherd over here. A shepherd, of course, is someone who looks after the sheep. And if we remember the Christmas story, the shepherds were the first people uh, to hear from the angels that Jesus was born. So as we're getting ready for Jesus's birth to celebrate his birthday at Christmas, everyone's uh, starting to get assembled and be in place. So we still have uh, Mary and Joseph who are gonna come next week and the donkey, and then uh, the three kings after that. And of course, baby Jesus on Christmas. So remember to, to keep your figures safe and your manger scene safe, put it in a binder or folder, and uh, we'll keep going with it next week, okay? So today I wanted to talk a bit more about the importance of the Advent wreath and the candles. Why it's so important. Well, you notice it's a, it's a nice sunny day here. I'm, I'm uh, recording this in the morning. But uh, at this time of year, the days are the shortest that they are. It, gets, it seems to get dark, like starting around 4.30 and the sun's down by 5 or so. And it doesn't rise again until uh, later in the morning now. So we're getting to the, the longest, uh, darkest nights and the darkest time in our year. And that's why light is so important at this time. The light of the Advent candle, the light of our Christmas lights and Christmas trees. We, we make it as bright as possible during these dark days to remind us that the light's going to come back, summer's going to come back, and God, who is our light, is always going to take care of us. So in particular, the Advent wreath, as the days get longer, even longer, up to Christmas, we're going to light even more candles, these other two, and then Jesus, who is the light of the world, is the Christ candle. And when he's born, after Christmas, the days start getting uh, longer again, which means that summer is coming. So that's the importance of, of light at this time of year for us, but there's 
other cultures that celebrate festivals of light at this time too. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we celebrated what's called the Festival of Diwali. Now Diwali is a, a festival of light that people who are of Hindu uh, background or Sikh, they celebrate by lighting a whole bunch of candles and having lights up and, and dancing and celebrating lamps, everything, to celebrate the triumph of light over darkness. Now darkness, when we talk about darkness, we of course mean the night and when there's no lights, but we also mean it in the sense of uh, dark behavior, let's say, human behavior that is dark. Uh, being mean to each other, ignoring each other, lying, um, bullying, not taking care of each other. We call these this, this aspect of, of our behavior darkness. And these festivals of light are reminders to us that we can be a light for each other by caring for each other, by making the world a better place, by loving one another. That's how Christ is the light and wants us to be the light as well. Another really important celebration right around the time of Christmas is people of the Jewish faith celebrate a festival called Hanukkah. Now, it's also a festival of light and they use, they don't use a wreath like we do, they use something called a menorah, which has uh, eight candles in it. Uh, let me get this right. Uh, eight days, yes. And it's a commemoration of Way back, even before Jesus' time, um, there were people who had uh, come to occupy Jerusalem and the, 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 the country of Israel where Jewish people lived, and they were mean to them. They didn't let them celebrate their festivals. They, the Jewish people had a, a great temple, and they uh, did things in there that the Jewish people found abhorrent, like um, sacrificing a pig because Jewish people uh, didn't eat pork or have anything to do with pigs as part of their tradition. And these, uh, these rulers had done things like that. And uh, it left the Jewish people thinking it was such a dark time, darkness in the sense of uh, oppression and their occupiers being mean. What ended up happening was there was a revolt against these occupiers and they retook the temple and they rededicated it. And the amazing thing that happened was when they, they took it back, they only had enough oil to last for a little bit because back then they didn't have electricity and the lamps in the temple were important that they stay lit because it symbolized the presence of God. So they didn't have electricity, they only had a little bit of oil and it should have only lasted, let's say, a day, but it ended up lasting eight days. So it was a miracle. And so the festival of Hanukkah remembers this, remembers the dedication of the temple, and it lasts for eight days to remember the eight days that the, the oil lasted. Now, when I talk about um, these, these festivals, religious festivals, reminding us that we are the light, I just wanted to share with you a story of something that happened in Billings, Montana in the US. There was uh, a young Jewish boy who was excited for Hanukkah, just like we're excited for Christmas, and he put up a menorah in his bedroom window. And someone who was a person who was full of hate um, ended up throwing a brick through this little boy's bedroom window. Thankfully, he wasn't in his room at the time and he wasn't hurt, at least not physically. But obviously that's a really hurtful thing to do. It's a hateful thing to do. It's a dark thing to do. And the, the people in the town, in solidarity and an act of love, uh, ended up putting menorahs in their windows, just about everyone did, to, to show their support to this little boy and his family. And it's an example of what we can do to bring light into our world. That is by helping one another, supporting one another, making sure people stay safe. So just take a quick look at this clip and I'll meet you back here. Then 
A brick was thrown through the bedroom window of a six-year-old boy who had placed a menorah there for Hanukkah. I, I remember discussing it with the publisher of the Gazette the next morning after this had happened and saying that please make this front page news because I want people to understand what it's like to be Jewish. I guess it was a question of looking for an image that kind of put this together. During the Second World War, the Danish king is reputed to have come out after the uh, Jewish community there was forced to wear stars by the Nazi occupiers, that he was reported to have come out with a, uh, with a yellow star too. The Billings Gazette printed a full-page menorah for townspeople to tear out and hang in their windows. The good thing about this town is that everybody said that one day, let's get together. So what we're going to do is put menorahs in our windows, and pretty soon everybody we knew had one. By late December, Nearly 10,000 people in Billings, Montana, had menorahs in their windows. I would like to have thought that um, if, if this had happened to my Native American community, that they would have put a Native American symbol in their window. If it happened to the um, uh, gay and lesbian community, that they would have put a pink triangle in their window. I would have liked to have, have hoped or think that they would have done that. There is great goodness in the world, but we need permission and ways to, to reach out. I mean, after all, these are our neighbors. If somebody threw a brick through your neighbor's house in Montana, you run out there and try to stop them. Don't they do that anywhere else in the country? In this particular case, I think the best part of it surfaced. I was very proud of Millings for that. Just one tiny candle we lit, and it wasn't much, but that was something. So this season of Advent, this season of the Advent wreath and the candles, is a reminder that we too can be a light for one another by helping one another and caring for another. So we'll uh, wrap up our children's time today, and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, have a great week, everyone. And uh, just a reminder, if anyone has any questions about something, please send them in. And uh, also, please, uh, when we're completed our manger scenes, if you're comfortable, you can take a picture and, and send that to me as well. We'd love to see them and, and show them on our Children's Time video. Okay, take care, everybody. God bless you. Bye.